Please admit His Excellency the Governor, the Honorable Auditor, the uh, Governor's Counselor, Marilyn Petito Devaney, the Sheriff of Middlesex County, Peter Katujan, Senator Brownsberger, Representative Rogers, Representative Long, and the Reverend Clergy. Mario Luis, good morning. Please be seated. Honored survivors, Reverend clergy, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the House of Representatives. My name is Jonathan Hecht. I have the great privilege to serve as the state representative for the 29th Middlesex District, a district that is centered on Watertown and home to a vibrant and proud Armenian community. And on behalf of the other legislators who are hosting this event, Senator William Brownsberger, Representative John Long, Representative Jim Maselli, and Representative Dave Rogers, I thank you for joining us for the commemoration of the 99th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Every year for nearly three decades, the legislature and state leaders in Massachusetts have convened this event to honor the victims and survivors of the Armenian Genocide, to recognize the genocidal crimes committed by the Ottoman Turks, to celebrate the remarkable resilience and spirit of the Armenian people, and to dedicate ourselves to preventing the recurrence of genocide anywhere in the world. As you know, this event was first held under the leadership of a great Speaker of the House and a great Armenian-American, George Kaverian. And we're very pleased to have his brother and other members of the Kaverian family with us here today. It is now my great privilege to introduce the current Speaker of the House. No speaker since George Kaverian has been more supportive of this event and the cause of the Armenian people than Speaker DeLeo. We simply could not hold this event without the assistance we received from him and from his office. And even more important, the speaker makes time each year to attend this commemoration himself. And I think this tells you all you need to know about him as a leader and as a person. So please join me in welcoming the Speaker of the House, Robert A. DeLeo. House of Representatives, and to have all of the 
elected officials and dignitaries here, of course, led by our wonderful and honorable governor, the Bob Patrick. And I'm uh, proud to welcome you all back to the House uh, chamber. Uh, I think we had a little bit of a, unfortunately, a year off last year, if I remember uh, correct, correctly. And last year, all of us lay terrorized by those who would, would harm our community. And it was a frightening irony that many here today lived in the very town where the suspect in the marathon bombing was captured. This chamber, led by speakers and representatives of all backgrounds, exemplifies the freedom that we share as Americans. Its legacy is particularly resonant today when, as we mark a solemn occasion, we also celebrate the Armenian community and the contributions that immigrants and their descendants have made to public life in our great state. I thank Representative Hecht for hosting today so that we have the chance to remember and to reflect. Welcome and thank you, obviously, to Governor Patrick and Representative Lawn and Rogers and Auditor Bump and Senator Brownsberger and Sheriff Katusian. I'd also like to thank Megan Wood, who organized today's event. Today we mark the 99th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Once again, oh, and by the way, let me not forget my good friend Rachel Caprilli, by the way, the Secretary of Labor. of the Armenian Genocide. Once again, I stand in solidarity with you to say that we will never forget the 1.5 million Armenians killed. While we remember them and the families affected, we must vow to carry on their legacy by ensuring the world does not forget so that a tragedy like this never happens again. I am honored to carry on this tradition, to carry on the weight of its history that Speaker Kaverian began. I keep a copy of Peter Halakian's The Burning Tigress in my office to remind me about the importance, the important role, I should say, of the Americans playing in speaking out. In that spirit, I raise my voice to join Congressman McGovern and other members of Congress who have condemned the brutal attacks on the Armenian populated town of Kassab in Syria. Today we're honored to have Don Talelian in the chamber. Don was the architect of the American Heritage Park on the Greenway. The park and the sculpture represent the Armenian community's gratitude for the refuge Boston provided during the genocide. They also celebrate the wider immigrant experience, the importance of immigrants to our national identity, and the contributions that immigrants of all backgrounds make to American culture and society. As we reflect today, I urge you to consider that symbolism and the gratitude that we owe to the Armenian community which has become an exemplary pillar of American values. As humans, as Americans, we must ensure that human spirit outshines epic infamy. Today's commemoration will help us renew that commitment. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for coming to the State House and making this remembrance so special. And thank you for allowing me to be part of that tradition here today. Thank you very much. And God
It is now my distinct honor to introduce a gentleman who is in his final year of service to the Commonwealth and to the nation. Well, I'm not going to say to the nation, to the Commonwealth, let me say that. <laughs> I'll leave speculation up to the other folks. But I will tell you, I've had the honor of speaker now for almost six years, and before that as chair of Ways and Means to serve, as, uh, to serve with this man. And I can think of, uh, as I've stated previously, no better government that we have had here in, in the Commonwealth. Um, and I think that when you're talking about whether it's uh, issues such as that, that we're commemorating here today or, or other such issues, or uh, someone who understands the importance of these types of remembrance, I think that Governor Deval Patrick is, is, a, is a gentleman who will always make sure that we always remember. And he will always be remembered as the governor who did so much for this, for this Commonwealth and for this country. It's my honor to introduce our colleague, our governor, Deval Patrick. First of all, I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker, for not just your generous welcome, but your extraordinary partnership. I, uh, I wanted to be here today, uh, although briefly, because Secretary Caprillian and I have to go to a cabinet meeting. And since she serves on the cabinet and I call the meeting, we kind of feel like we both should be there. <laughs> but I wanted to come by this morning to offer an official gubernatorial welcome to all of my friends from the Armenian community on this solemn annual acknowledgement of the Armenian Genocide. And as I was thinking about spending a moment with you this morning, I was struck by how poignant it is, at least for me, to have the occasion on this, my last year as your governor, to welcome you to the State House when it was you who welcomed me to the State House as a candidate nine years ago at this very occasion. And most of you, or many of you, uh, won't remember, but I will never forget it was a moment in the campaign when my own human rights bona fides had been called into public question. Having spent much of my professional career on these very issues of affirming human dignity. And it was in this chamber, sitting in the back, as a first-time candidate, and feeling, frankly, overwhelmed by that experience and by an attack that went right to not just what I did, but who I was, that this community opened its arms to me. I will never forget it. And I wanted to come and thank you for that. You have, without a doubt, as the speaker said and as other speakers will say, made our commonwealth better. But I'm here to tell you that you have made this man better. And it has been my honor to work with you and alongside of you on a whole host of issues including, I'm proud to say, the Armenian Heritage Park, which I think is frankly a triumph for all of us. And it continues to be humbling for me, as I know it is, for my colleagues in government to be in the presence of these extraordinary survivors 
who by their example remind us of the resilience of the human spirit. And though we may not in every case share the blood of Armenia, we share the spirit of Armenia and of Armenians. And I'm here in that spirit to welcome all of you. Thank you so much and enjoy very much. The Thank you again, Governor Patrick and Speaker DeLeo, for your heartfelt remarks here today and for your steadfast support for the Armenian community and for recognition of the Armenian Genocide. Uh, I earlier recognized the other constitutional officers who are with us here today, Auditor Bump, Governor's Counselor Devaney. Uh, we're also joined by a number of other state and local officials, and I want to recognize them and thank them also for their presence and their support. Uh, they include uh, Edward Bedrosian, who is the first Attorney General uh, in the Office of Attorney General Martha Coakley. Uh, we have several members of the Watertown Town Council, Councillor Susan Falkoff, Councillor Vincent Picciarelli, and Councillor Anthony Palumba. And we likewise have uh, three local officials from the town of, Water, uh, the town of Belmont. Uh, Andy Rojas, who's the chair of the uh, Board of Selectmen in Belmont. Uh, Mark Palillo, a selectman. And also Sami Baghdadi, the vice chair of the Belmont Board of Selectmen. And finally, we've also been joined by Natalie Kaufman, who is a representative of our Congresswoman, Catherine Clark. So we thank all of them for being with us as well today. <laughs> Joe Matosian of the First Armenian Church in Belmont to offer the invocation. All rise up for a moment of silent prayer in memory of Father Raphael Antonia. Prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, creator of the universe and sustainer of life, we humbly recognize your greatness and majesty. This morning we thank you for the freedom we enjoy in this great country of ours, United States of America. Also, we thank you for this great state and the leadership we enjoy. Lord, we are gathered in this chamber to remember, and with broken hearts and sadness, we do remember the innocent victims of the first genocide of the 20th century, the murder of a million and a half innocent Armenian people. Our dear people who suffered so much, who were slaughtered indiscriminately, who faced extermination, endured unbelievable hardship, 
who were forcibly and cruelly separated from their loved ones, who were deported to face unbearable pain, hunger, thirst, death, and destruction. We, with tears in our eyes, recall their cries, their tears, their pain, their suffering. And yet, at the same time, we are inspired by their courage and determination for survival as they face this terrible calamity. Lord, we pray that you will bless their memory and help us to never, never forget them. And as we commemorate April 24, grant war that it will not be just a commemoration or remembrance, but let it be a trumpet call not to give up, but work hard until justice prevails. Lord God, I pray that you will touch the conscience of nations, that they will rise up and demand and pursue the truth and justice until it is achieved. Also, Father, help nations to work shoulder to shoulder, to do their utmost not to allow genocide to occur ever again, and make this world a better place for all nations, for all color, for all creeds, so people can live in peace and harmony. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning. I'm State Representative Dave Rogers, and it is my distinct honor uh, to be here with all of you on the 99th anniversary of the Armenian commemoration of the Armenian Genocide. Uh, this is the first time that I've had the privilege to be here since being elected in 2012. And since being elected, it's been my great and good fortune to get to know the wonderful, warm, people in the Armenian community that I represent. Now, if you'll join me, uh, please rise as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would now please remain standing while children from St. Stephen's and the Armenian Sisters Academy sing America the Beautiful and the Armenian National Anthem. Thank you. 
honor us empowering us with those national songs. Uh, it is my honor to present a resolution to, of the Massachusetts House of Representatives and the Senate, a joint resolution to Don Kalele. As the speaker stated earlier, Don is the architect and designer of the American Heritage Park in, in Greenway in Boston. In 2012, we celebrated the opening of that park after more than a decade of hard work by Don and by the Armenian Heritage Foundation, led by Foundation President Jim Kalushchin. This beautiful public space is a generous gift from Massachusetts American Armenians to the city of Boston and to the Commonwealth. We live a charmed life in this great and peaceful country. And in our charmed lives, it's all too easy to forget that we do live in a dangerous world and that genocides happen and that we need to fight to protect human rights, protect human freedoms, not only in our own country, but across the world. And so this park provides an essential reminder, an essential message to the people of Boston that we need to keep in mind. And so I, we thank deeply uh, all of those who contributed to creating that park, in particular, Don Kirk, Talele. And so it's my privilege to read the resolution offered uh, to the House and Senate and approved by the House and Senate, commending Donald J. Talele for his contributions to the commemoration of the Armenian Genocide. Whereas Donald J. Talele, a member of the American Institute of Architects, is the designer and architect of the Armenian Heritage Park on the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Greenway in the city of Boston. And whereas, since 2001, Donald Talalian and members of the Armenian Heritage Foundation have dedicated their time and skills to completing this project and to the process of securing the designation of Parcel 13 on the Greenway. And whereas, the Armenian Heritage Park is recognized for its unique design and is enjoyed by the Armenian community, the citizens of Boston, and visitors alike. And whereas, Donald Talalian's concept and design of the park and each of its elements depicts different parts of the immigrant experience, including a fountain that set, represents faith and hope, a labyrinth that symbolizes the immigrant's journey, and a geometric sculpture that will be reconfigured into new shapes each year and reflects the reshaped lives of those uprooted from their homeland. And whereas Donald Talalian, principal of Talalian Associates, architects and planners, donated his services as a gift to the Armenian community. And recruited a committee at the project's inception to build direction and consensus. And whereas Donald Talalian worked hand in hand with civil, structural, electrical, and hydraulic engineers, as well as landscape and lighting designers to complete the park. And whereas, Donald Talalian's design and vision commemorates the immigrant experience and commemorates all of the lives lost during the Armenian Genocide from 1915 to 1923, and all genocides that have followed. Therefore, be it resolved, that the Massachusetts General Court hereby commends architect Donald J. Talalian for his contributions to the commemoration of the Armenian Genocide, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded by the Clerk of the House of Representatives to Donald J. Talalian. And uh, so I'm honored to be among those signers with Robert D'Elia, Stephen James, Clerk of the House, Terry Murray, President of the Senate, William Welch, Clerk of the Senate, Jonathan Hecht, our Chairman of this event, myself, Senator William Brownsberger, Representative David Rogers, Representative John Lawn, and Representative James Maselli, who offered the, the resolution together. So very, very honored to present this to Mr. Talele. Senator Heck, Representatives Brownsberger, Rogers, 
Massachusetts Legislature, together with the State House Commemorative Committee, for this resolution. I really am most honored. I really must add that this 12-year effort, begun as a mere possibility and ending with the park's completion, has been the result of extraordinary collaboration with my colleagues on the Design Concept Committee, the Armenian Heritage Foundation, organizations and individuals within the Armenian American community, city and state agencies, and various community stakeholders, and of course, our professional team. As most of you know, the possibility of this effort began through some legislative language referencing the anticipated development of the Greenway. That language was introduced by then Representative Peter Katujan and supported by other legislators, including then Representative Rachel Caprella. From there, the process progressed along with parts of the entire Greenway as we work closely with the Turnpike Authority, Mass Department of Transportation, the Conservancy, BRA, and other agencies. It must be said that the Rose Wharf community, and especially the unwavering support of the North End community, helped make the park a reality. Relevant to the horrific event that took place a year ago in our dear city, this initiative was to honor the memory of horrific events begun in 1915. While doing so with thought and respect, its public location suggested a design solution reflecting a spirit of universality. We would work toward an urban setting that might resonate with us all. Except for the Native Americans in our midst, all our forebears pulled, or in some cases were pulled, away from family and community, coming to this great country and establishing themselves in new and different ways. For whatever individuals may visit the park, we hope that they may discover an environment that will foster a sense of community, and yes, even pleasure. Its elements are meant to suggest hope and encourage peace. I want to thank you all for that realization. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Peter Katujian, and we know in this room today that while my name, my title, is spelled H-I-G-H in the Constitution of the Massachusetts, uh, our Massachusetts Constitution today, my title is spelled with an H-Y-E. I am the High Sheriff of Middlesex County, and it's great to be with all of you again today. We've had uh, been joined uh, by another uh, person that is a statewide office holder and also a candidate for governor, um, and I just want to make sure that we also recognize him, our treasurer, Steve Grossman, who has joined us as well. <laughs> and for those of you that think uh, we just announced politicians, we as a people and everywhere pol political and elected leaders or people seeking office go should always be remembered for taking the time out of their day. They have busy days, they have long days, and the fact that Treasurer Grossman, Auditor Bump, Representative Lund, Representative Maselli, uh, you know, we've got Representative Rogers was here, have taken time to be here is very important for all of us to remember 
uh, as we go through our daily lives and know that they have been here for us and we should be there for them. And especially, by the way, Representative John Heck and Senator Will Brownsberger, who are doing a great job in maintaining this. Thank you for your work. And Governor Councilor Devaney. I'm going to be uh, naming a number of the human rights groups, and we've been, we've been blessed to be joined by a number of human rights groups uh, to be here today. And what I would ask is, is there's a number of them that as I name each of you, that you please stand, but we hold our applause till the end, um, if, if you could. Uh, I'd like to introduce Robert Treston, Regional Director of the Anti-Defamation League. Brian Corr, Executive Director of, the Cam of Cambridge Pre Peace Action, Brian. Jeremy Burton, Executive Director, Jewish Community Relations Council. Emily Reichman, Jewish Community Relations Council. Rabbi Ronnie Friedman, Temple Israel in Brookline. Shannon Irwin, Legislative Director for the Massachusetts Immigrant and Refugee Advocacy Coalition, also known as MIRA. Eric Cohen, Coalition to Save Darfur. Larry Raskin, World in Watertown. Charlie Clements, Executive Director of the Carr Center for Human Rights Policy at the Harvard Kennedy School. Barbara Watson, Chair of the Belmont Human Rights Commission. Michael Curry, President of the NAACP Boston Branch. Andy Tarsi, President of the Edward M. Kennedy Institute for the United States Senate. And Adina Skoljic, New England Friends of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm sorry. Please, how about a hand for all these great and once again, as they have come to support us, we should always remember that when they need our friendship and our support as well. I'd also like to name a few consuls general in their official capacity that are here. And again, if we can hold our applause, but if they could stand so that we know who they are. Ms. Sayori Muraki, the Vice Consul General, Consulate General of Japan in Boston. Mr. Pedro Carvalho, the Consul General of Cape Verde. And Ms. Iphigenia Canara, Consul General of Greece, who I met during Greek Independence Day recently as well. Are you standing? I want to say thank you very much for coming in your official capacity to be with us today. Consul General Canara, the Greek Orthodox uh, Metropolis sent us a note to let us know that they stand in solidarity with the Armenians at the commemoration of the 99th centenary of the Armenian Genocide. And on behalf of the entire Armenian community and Greek community, we thank them deeply for their support of the community and for honoring our martyrs as well. So thank you very much to the Metropolitan. And today, as we commemorate the 99th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, we also remember those who suffered and died in other genocides and dedicate ourselves to preventing future genocides. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the genocide against the Tutsis in Rwanda, in which nearly a million Tutsi and moderate Hutu men and women and children were slain. Please join me in recognizing four special guests of our commemoration this year who are leaders from the Rwandan survivor community. And if I can have them stand as I announce their names and hold our applause until there are four of them, and these names, are, even for an Armenian, are difficult, so I apologize if they present a challenge to me. So before I begin this, I apologize in advance. Uh, Ms. Marie uh, Karine Bogus, uh, thank you. Uh, Terry Ruagaju, is that you, sir? No. Father Romain Rurangirwa, <laughs> thank you, Father. And Lambert Munyerwera, thank you very much. How about a hand for these great survivors? Remember our survivors, we remember you and your survivors as well. Thank you for being here. Now, it should be noted that on Sunday, April 13th, there will be a walk against genocide to commemorate the events in Rwanda. This walk, importantly, will begin at Armenian Heritage Park 
and it will end at the New England Holocaust Memorial in a short distance. I think it's a very touching tribute to our investment in our community as well. It will feature reflections on genocide from Rwandan, Armenian, Jewish, and other community leaders. And so please, if you have a moment, please join us on the 13th on Sunday at Armenian Heritage Park to speak about genocide that is still going on today and will go on in the future unless we do something about that. We also warm, warmly welcome Ms. Verna Kansian, who is assisting and representing the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Boston, and Mr. Jim Driscoll, Esquire, Executive Director of the Massachusetts Catholic Conference, uh, as the representatives of the Di Archdiocese for our Armenian Genocide Commemoration. We received the following note from Dr. Vito Nicastro, the Associate Director of the Office for Ecumenical and Interreligious Affairs of the Archdiocese, and I would like to read it to you because it is very powerful. With esteem in the Lord, we bring the solidarity of the Archdiocese to the Armenian community at the commemoration of the 99th centenary of the Armenian Genocide. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, has affirmed clearly that the Armenian Genocide, 1915 through 1922, is the first genocide of the 20th century. It is an act of justice to recognize this, and the Archdiocese does so today with you following the Holy See's example. Sadly, we are not only referring to history in the suffering of the Armenian people, as many of them are forced from their homes in Syria, even today. This is why we stand together more than ever with our brothers and sisters of Armenia, the first nation to become Christian in 301 AD. How beautiful is that? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Ms. Kansian and Mr. Driscoll, thank you so much for bringing this message to us. It is one that is extremely powerful. Aside from the walk on Sunday the 13th, we've got a couple of events that I do want to mention to you as well. We've got a vigil at the, uh, at the, uh, in the, a vigil at the park in commemoration of the Armenian Genocide um, at Armenian Heritage Park on Thursday, April 24th at 7 p.m. Please join us for that vigil again once you have time and continue to honor not just the gift to our community but the meaning behind that gift. And on Sunday, April 27th at 2 p.m., the Armenian Museum of America hosts a joint commemoration of the Armenian Genocide, the Tibetan Genocide, and the Genocide of the Democratic Republic of Congo in Watertown, Massachusetts. Again, that's April 27th at 2 p.m. And once again, please join us as we recognize those other genocides that have occurred as we know that they do with us. And lastly, uh, on this Wednesday, next Wednesday, April 16th, at Tufts University, at the Goddard Chapel, uh, we will be featuring the High Sheriff of Middlesex County as a speaker that evening. And I hope that you will join us there. I've only been to that event once or twice before. It's not something that many of us go to. But I will be speaking about something very different, and I'm honestly, I'm not usually stressed out about speaking, but this is something a little bit different and more personal. I will be speaking about Zartonk. I will be speaking about the awakening. I will be speaking about my own rebirth, my own awakening, my own personal zavtunk, and a call to action for our community, for our community's present day zavtunk as well. And I hope that you will join me as we speak about that at Tufts. Now before I introduce our keynote speaker, I want to uh, just offer a few words of thanks. As everyone know, knows, last year, this ceremony was canceled. It was a terrible, terrible day where an officer was killed and there was an occupation by law enforcement of Watertown in a way that was set to protect us and did protect us. In the wake of Boston Marathon bombing and the murder of MIT police officer Sean Collier. During the long and grueling hours that police officers, state troopers, sheriff's deputies and federal agents, and I was out there, folks, I saw my own deputies out there walking from house to house, walking by St. Stephen's School, clearing the school, not knowing what was around each corner a terrible and long day, there were many individuals and businesses who stepped forward with support of food and drinks for conducting the search. And I still remember getting a call because my deputy says, we need some food. 
we need some food. We need something. And I, think, I remember thinking, well, it's just around the corner to lunch. What's the big deal? We'll get you some lunch. And then I looked at my watch, and it was 9.30 in the morning. They had been out for so many hours by that point. Some of those people uh, that gave, gave some food and drink are here with us today. Hovenas Janessi, the owner of Ani Catering in Watertown, and Lalig Marsarian, the chair of the organizing committee for this annual commemoration. Early in the day, they brought food destined for this canceled State House ceremony to the command post in Watertown, where deputies from my office and the members of the Northeastern Law Enforcement Council were staged, and also Seda Dakesi, an owner of Seda's Cafe, who made sure that food was delivered to first responders during that day. These gestures and many others made the residents across the region uh, were greatly appreciated by law enforcement and, again, reflected so well upon our community. Thank you so much. I have the great privilege of honor of introducing our guest speaker, Attorney Mark Giragos. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about Mark Giragos uh, before I turn the microphone over. Aside from being an Armenian, which in my mind always makes him a great man anyway, <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit about the other things that make him a great man. Because we should feel proud about people that have done well in our community, not just because they have done well and they, they are Armenian, because of all the things that they have done to achieve that greatness. He's the principal attorney at the internationally known firm of Giragos and Giragos. He attended Haverford College in Pennsylvania as an undergraduate and later his Juris Doctorate from Loyola Law School. He is one of only two attorneys ever named Lawyer of the Year in both criminal and civil arenas. California Law Business Magazine named him one of the 100 most influential attorneys in California three years in a row, and he has repeatedly been voted by his peers as one of Los Angeles's super lawyers. His $59 million jury verdict in a trade secrets case against pharmaceutical giant Pfizer Corporation was voted both top 10 verdicts in 2008 in California by the Daily Journal, as well as top 50 verdicts in the United States by the National Law Journal. And despite all his professional successes, Mark has remained so deeply loyal to our community, to the Armenian community, over the years. He was one of the lead lawyers in a pair of groundbreaking federal class action lawsuits against New York Life Insurance and AXA Corporation for insurance policies issued in the early 20th century during the genocide of 1.5 million Armenians by the Ottoman Turk regime, eventually setting, settling these two cases for more than $37.5 million. He is currently suing the government of Turkey for reparations arising out of the Armenian genocide. Mark also serves on the board of Birthright Armenia as the chairman of the Armenian Bone Marrow Donor Registry and has been a member of the Armenia Fund International Board of Trustees since 2006. I will say this as well, that, um, in, 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 in if, and if I may, by the way, I, I, I shuffled my papers here. Before I, before I finally bring Mark up here, two things that I just did want to say. Um, when Governor Deval Patrick was leaving here, you heard his speech. He's been here, I think, almost every year since then. He has been a pivotal point, he was a pivotal character in our getting Armenian Heritage Park when many odds were against us during that period of time. And he spoke of that moment when he sat in one of those chairs, I believe it was right back there, as I recall, because I remember joining him at some point. And when he spoke about the powerful effect it had on him that day, I remember because I saw him back there with tears welling in his eyes. This is the effect that our community had on Governor Patrick. And we're going to miss Governor Patrick and his leadership. I also want to say one other thing that person that I think we're going to miss because each year we have so many wonderful clergy, and thank you all for being here today. But we're going to miss Father Rafael Andonia. Who will be laid to rest tonight and has been an amazing friend to our community and part of our community and leader in our community and always smiling and always willing to join with us in commemorating this genocide and giving us religious guidance. So please remember 
Father Raphael, in your thoughts and your prayers. And just lastly, to this committee, when I left the State House, as anyone will, will, would do, you worry about the continuation of this great event in this committee with Lalig and Representative Hecht and Senator Brownsburg has continued on this work. And we should always remember that because they are Armenian by choice. They didn't have the blessing of being born Armenian. They have chosen to become Armenian. And we thank the, all of you, uh, especially these two. Let me just bring up Mark in one moment, but let me say this. When I was running last year, as so many of us knew, we were all running for higher office, weren't we? It wasn't just one person. It was all of us that were running for higher office. And Mark Yerigo spoke at St. James. By the way, I held the record for the most attendees at the St. James Men's Club at about 200. Mark Yerigo had to come and get like 500 people there, so I don't think I'll ever break that record again. But when he was up there speaking, he spoke about a little bit about the Zartunk, which gave me this idea of Zartunk. And he spoke about getting people elected into office so they can make the changes, not relying on others to make the changes for us as a community, and not relying on the courts, not relying on things that are out of our control, but to take control. And one thing he said was to elect Armenians. And when I decided to run for Congress, I reached out to Mark Giragos in Los Angeles, and I asked him if he would be supportive. And Mark Giragos did not hesitate for even a moment he said, absolutely. And we put together an event, and I flew down to Los Angeles, and I hit a couple of other places, and I joined he and his wife, Paul, at their beautiful home, and we had a wonderful event, and it was a celebration of our people by coastally and he doesn't hesitate for a moment. So when we talk about a person stepping up for our community, that's Mark Garagos. What, but what many people will not understand is if any of you have read the book Mistrial that Mark has written, and it is a great book, it is a wonderful book, and I, I have it on my nightstand. My wife will attest to this. And it is something that is easy to read and fun to read and insightful and powerful. But what is most powerful is, despite all of these great achievements of Mark Giragos, Mark Giragos dedicates the book Mistrial to his father, Pops Giragos. And not only does he dedicate it to his father, but he speaks in the foreword, throughout the entire foreword, about his Armenianism, about the burden that we all bear in recognizing the genocide, about the thought that he was thinking about the priesthood versus becoming a lawyer, and his priest, which, what was his name, Father? Surpa Zanbache. Surpa Zanbache said, what, are you kidding me? I've seen you. You do not want to go become a priest. <laughs> go become a lawyer and help our community. He speaks so personally and intimately in this forward about being Armenian and why he felt strongly that that was why he belonged as a defense attorney, to stop the oppression by government on individuals and people, that his Armenianism drove him to do what he does today. He speaks of our genocide openly in it. He cites the poem from Saroyan, if two Armenians come together anywhere in the world, see if they will not create a new Armenia. When he was on CNN, in the aftermath of the Watertown bombing, when many people suggested there was an Armenian link to this. Remember this, how upset we all were? And yet who stepped up and emotionally and strongly and powerfully debated and argued and dismissed it in a way that carried weight because after Mark Gerigo stepped up to the plate for our people and dismissed it as ludicrous, they stopped talking about that. This gentleman. It's now my great honor to introduce our esteemed attorney, Mark Garagos, who will also deputize, I know he might not like this, deputize as a deputy high sheriff of Middlesex County.
I wouldn't have missed it. Um, as I said last time I was here last year, uh, you guys are the original Glendale, so uh, what better place to be than kind of the, I, I always look at Watertown and, and Boston as the uh, original spot for the diaspora. And I think Heritage Park speaks volumes to that and what you've accomplished with Heritage Park and bringing together the community is just an amazing feat, uh, truly an amazing feat. We may have, um, you beat in terms of the numbers of Armenians in California and surely in Glendale we probably have you beat in terms of the sheer numbers, but you certainly, we have a lot to learn in California from you uh, in terms of the cohesiveness and the inclusion that, that uh, you all have demonstrated here. Um, I was at an event last night um, for the USC Institute of Armenian Studies, and it was amazing to me to see there um, Governor Dukmejian, who was the past governor, one of the past governors of California was there, um, and some of the other luminaries in the Armenian community, and I was talking to them about coming back here, and almost to a person, they all talked fondly about Massachusetts, Watertown, and how it really was kind of the outpost for the Armenian community generations ago, and you've kept up the, that torch and that flame, and we salute you for, for that. When I was asked to speak about the, um, here at the, at the genocide recognition, I'm, I'm somewhat bipolar or schizophrenic about these um, commemorations, and I will tell you why. Um, yesterday, I think the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, for the first time in 25 years, voted to a, a bill for urging a resolution for the genocide. And while I take some pride in that, at the same time, I say to myself, why is it that it's the first time in 25 years, and why are we continuing this fight over the word genocide when back in the actually late 70s and early 80s, uh, we not only had a genocide resolution, but we had President Reagan who recognized the genocide. And I don't say that um, just because it has, because I'm, I'm upset about it. I say it because it has real consequences. Um, as some of you know, and as Peter mentioned, I've been litigating for 15 years and proudly litigating uh, these cases on behalf of the people who are beneficiaries of insurance policies or banks or others who profited off of the genocide. And one of the arguments that is used, not only by the insurance companies or the banks, but by the Turkish government as well, when I sued the Turkish government, and one of the arguments that actually carried weight in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals was that the term Armenian Genocide, and they invalidated the statute under which we were uh, suing, was that that was an encroachment on the executive's ability or the executive's foreign power, and therefore the statute which enabled us to sue, which our California legislature had unanimously passed, was invalidated because we used genocide and because the Clinton administration, the George W. Bush administration, and the Obama administrations had not recognized the Armenian genocide, that therefore that statute was an unlawful and unconstitutional intrusion on the executive's power. Now, I don't know about you, but that's astonishing to me that we put the word Armenian genocide in a statute, that that statute allowed us to sue on behalf, to get our money back. We weren't even suing the Turkish government in these first cases. We were suing insurance companies who kept the money that these Armenians had paid in premiums for virtually, they kept them for 90 years when we first filed the lawsuit. And somehow the insurance company is going to say that our use of the term Armenian genocide um, is an unconstitutional encroachment. There's a, look it up, it's, a, it's now a case decision um, and binding precedent. The U.S. Supreme Court would not grant search area. So I say to myself, well, if we won that battle back in the 70s and 80s, why are we like Sisyphus rolling this rock up a hill continually every year again? Why, why are we doing that? To what end? What is the end game of that? I would suggest that we ought to move from the R word of recognition 
to the R word of restitution, to the R word of reparation. concept um, is not, I don't think, um, such a revolutionary concept. Um, one of the reasons that the Turks funnel modern-day Turkey, which by the way, you would think, why does modern-day Turkey care about what happened with a previous regime that was unrelated to them? Well, it's because of the R word. It's not because they fear uh, the recognition. It's because they fear reparations. Why do they pay retired legislators like Bob Livingston, tens of millions of dollars to lobby against the, the recognition. It's not because they care about recognition, it's because they care about reparations. Why is it that we as a people cannot get or, or do not have the ability uh, to get our government to broker a deal? Why is it that our government ends up, our US government, ends up allowing Turkey to deny this in such a way that now we wake up and we see all of these human rights violations that are going on in modern day Turkey and we say to ourselves, um, or, or US officials will say to themselves, well, how did this happen? How is it that Erdogan can shut off Twitter? How is it that he can back rebels that will invade Kesa? How is it that we're, we're over there not protecting the Christian communities that have been there for hundreds of years? Well, if, it's a very simple explanation for it. When you let people, when you let somebody deny an unspeakable crime, when you do not hold somebody accountable, and, and this is all I've done for 31 years, is, is work in a criminal justice system that's based on the idea that if somebody commits a crime, you prove it in a court of law and then you punish them. And that is what the cornerstone of America is. That's the Constitution embodies this. Yet when it comes to foreign policy, we adopt this uh, idea that somehow it's okay for somebody to commit a crime, to keep continuing to commit this crime, and to never punish them. And then we wonder, how is it, how is it that our friend Turkey ends up betraying us, ends up slaughtering um, people who are related, and I can't tell you the number of Kesopsis, who have dual citizenship, both in Syria and um, US citizenship, and who've been driven out of there and slaughtered and watch it happen again and again and again. And we blindly walk along here in the US with our foreign policy, wondering why it is that we can't trust this nation who we not only give a billion dollars a year to, but we turn blind eye to everything they do. Peter had talked about the speech that I gave last year, and I couldn't say it more. It is fantastic that we have legislators who come here, as Peter says, they are Armenian by choice. The problem is that until we have more legislators and until we have people occupying the State Department who are Armenians by birth, uh, nothing is going to change. One of the things that I think everybody who's Armenian should know, this was a stunning revelation to me about 15 years ago. Peter had mentioned that uh, one of the things I'm proudest of is uh, chairman of the Armenian Bone Marrow Foundation. And one of the reasons we started the Armenian Bone Marrow Foundation is I had a client whose daughter is Armenian, uh, was, had leukemia. And I knew the, uh, that obviously a bone marrow transplant would work, and we went to the registry and they could not find a match, absolutely could not find a match. And as I came to learn more and more about it, it turns out that Armenians, and we as Armenians, uh, have our own unique genetic fingerprints or genetic footprint, um, to the point where I've actually defended cases now and have determined that on the 13 markers of the DNA um, in our county in Los Angeles, the sheriff preliminarily, because of cost, only goes out to the first six markers. So when you're doing a preliminary hearing with somebody who's accused of rape and if he's Armenian, um, and they do the preliminary DNA test, if the first six markers and you're Armenian, that means everybody in this room who's Armenian would be a suspect and would be held to answer for trial. The, we actually share 
all of the markers out to almost 12 of the 13, which is unbelievable. There is no other ethnicity that I'm aware of that does. And what that means is that everyone around you who is Armenian is literally related to you to astronomical um, uh, population studies. I mean, you are related in a way that we all know intuitively and anecdotally because you can't sit with an Armenian and not find a relative within uh, four or five minutes. But there now is a scientific basis for that. And I say that because um, that Saroyan poem that I quote in the book and that uh, I've got up on my wall and I think every self-respecting Armenian male's got somewhere in their office. Um, you know, when Saroyan talked about uh, the Armenians uh, having their culture destroyed and, and their music destroyed and everything else, and I, I say, well, we sure have come a long way, at least culturally, because um, now we have capital cities and system of a down for music, uh, which are wildly popular. We've got Peter Balakian who has written books that are wildly successful. Um, we do have politicians like Peter who are making a mark, and like Governor Duke Medjin in California. But the battle that we need to fight, um, and that we need desperately to fight, because we're coming up on the heels where there will be no more survivors. I mean, we literally are knocking on the door, is the fight for restitution and reparations. My opinion and uh, my first suggestion is uh, Mount Ararat can be a down payment on that reparation. Uh, and to all of you who join in, the, in the, uh, the human rights groups who are here, we stand shoulder to shoulder with you. This is something that has lived with us for going on three to four generations. We understand that it's something that you'll never escape. Uh, we feel your pain, as uh, President Clinton used to say, and we'll do anything and everything we can to help you as well. Thank you for inviting me here. It's truly my honor. I never thought some little punk Armenian kid would be addressing the State House in Massachusetts, but you know, more amazing things have happened. Thank you very much. Representative Maselli, who's one of the OGs. I call that the original I mean. Good to see you. Good to see you. I sure you. Don't look for my name on the program. Someone told me it fell on the cutting room floor. But seriously, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Representative Jim Maselli, and I am an Armenian. My mother's maiden name is Amanda, and I'm very proud of it. And when I was very young, uh, we moved from Dorchester to the North End, but my grandmother, grandfather stayed in Dorchester. And in those days, it seemed like a long trip. But my mother, with her wonderful foresight, uh, there was no trip to Disneyland at that time. I've been here since 1977 no trip to Disneyland, and I went to stay with my grandmother on just about every school vacation that we had until she passed away. And from the, my very early years with her, not only would she cook for me, and I developed a taste for Chikurfta early in the game, and my father thought that was barbaric, being an Italian, eating that raw meat, but I thought it was a wonderful meal. But I'll say this, she used to indoctrinate me and talk to me about the genocide. And she and my grandfather barely made it out of over there uh, to America. And uh, she talked to me about it. And I can remember her. I'm getting very dramatic now, but it's true. Every night, I can remember her kneeling down and praying and thanking God that she had come here. And uh, it left an indelible, indelible memory uh, in my mind. But uh, as I said, I'm very proud of that. And I grew up, my father's uh, name is Maselli. 
My mother's name is Demangian, and I grew up with what I thought was the best of both worlds. My good friend, and he was mentioned early on in this program, George Kaderian, uh, really started this. Started it, got me involved in it, and it meant an awful lot to me. And every year when I come back here and touch base with you folks, I really feel like I'm reaching back in time. So uh, it's, this is a wonderful program put on by people who really have an interest here. Uh, and I applaud you. I applaud you for what you've been through. And I applaud you for the good that you do. That the good that you do, you teach your youngsters about their heritage and about how important it is to remember the genocide. And uh, I'll never forget. So I thank you for being here. And as I say, my name is Jim Maselli. My mother's name was Louise Demangian. My grandmother's name was Lucy Demangian. And we had a host of relatives in Watertown, which is like Mecca of uh, Armenia, as far as Massachusetts is concerned. But I've got great pleasure, the reason why I'm on this part of the program, it's a great pleasure for me, in my own little town, and as I say, I represent Wilmington and Tewksbury. They started a program. hear my uh, home folk back there. I want to welcome Wilmington High School. And they've got a course called Facing History and Ourselves. And the students and their teachers, Mara Tucker and Lisa Joy Desberg. <laughs> they began their day in Boston at Heritage Park and then walked here to the State House. Their Armenian genocide studies have included contacting both federal and state officials regarding genocide issues, but I haven't heard from them yet, writing for the Knights of Vartan Genocide Essay Contest, creating artwork using the Armenian alphabet, and even composing a symphony. And this is right in my own backyard, so let's hear it for them again. I've been here since 1977. I could go on and on for the next hour. And I see uh, my friends in back getting nervous. But it's going to be my great pleasure to introduce, and I hope I get this right, but I think I will, Anna Haas Kedjin, who really made an effort, an effort so that we won't ever forget those folks who survived the genocide and the genocide itself and she runs a program called Standing Up for Your Survivor. Anna Huss. They went on to lead unique and fulfilling lives. Um, while collecting photos for the project, I was fortunate enough to hear some of the amazing stories of these genocide survivors. 100-year-old Yevnige Apostyan Salivian um, was forced out of her home as a child. Her family got a cart, and on their journey, she was accidentally thrown off of a bridge. The horse's reins from the cart caught her leg. To this day, she has a scar and she somehow managed to survive. Um, Digin Boyanyan's father, Karni Kanyan, survived the genocide and went on to dedicate his life to education. My great-grandfather, Armanag Antranigyan, wrote a memoir of his genocide experience, which allowed my brother and I to relive his highs, his lows, 
and incredible luck that led to us being here in what he referred to as heaven, the United States. I hope that when the St. Stephen's and Sisters Academy students asked their parents for photos, that um, it started a conversation that ultimately answered the question, how did we end up here? I encourage you all to share the stories of your survivors. Use these posters as an impetus for discussion. Spread the word and never forget that we owe everything we are to these survivors. 99 years later, I ask you to stand up for those who are no longer able to stand up for themselves. Please rise and stand up for your survivor. stood up for their survivor. I also want to uh, thank uh, your parents, who I know have been tremendously helpful in supporting your work. And this has been a tremendous new addition to our program, and we're very grateful to you and to your whole family. <laughs> At this time, I would like to invite uh, the Reverend Father Vedra Shatilian of St. Gregory Armenian Church in Springfield to deliver the Requiem Prayer. And after the Requiem Prayer, I would ask that everyone uh, please observe a moment of silence for those who are no longer with us. And I would ask you to particularly hold in your thoughts at this time uh, all of the victims of the ethnic violence uh, in Kesa. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear God, we thank you for this commemoration at the State House in Boston, where every year as a united community, we remember and commemorate our martyrs. We ask you to bless our country, the United States of America, and guide it, as you did from the first day of its establishment, we ask that our country may continue to be the land of freedom and democracy. Please bless this, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the first home for Armenians in the United States, its people, as well as its governor, legislatives, and all of the officials. We ask you to bless the souls of the martyrs of the Armenian Genocide, between 1915 and 1923 in Ottoman Turkey, who gave their lives for being Armenian Christians. And today especially, we also pray for our brothers and sisters in Syria and the region of Kesab, who are being persecuted and displaced by religious fanatics supported by the Turkish government. We ask you to bless our historical fatherland Armenia, and the Armenian people all around the world, the first Christian nation, the nation of civilization, and the nation of progress and culture. 
And finally, we ask you to bless all the people gathered here in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Derbo Ormia, Derbo Ormia, Derbo Ormia. Christos, Vortias, Tuzo, Anohadal, Ye Parekut. Kata, Quar Chagan, Sirova, Diochi, Santutsial, Zaraitseva, Hotskots. Ye Manavandan, Iokis, Piragorna, Dagatsanaski, Sayots. Vort Kadaret San Hami, Hazar Inairu Dasting, Hankatsas, Sans Panutian. Haremadjan Hayastan, Turkia Yevhai Bayres, Itzerat Osmanian Turkio, Yev Manavat Hisha Derizokin, Nayev Norokan Kutsial, Yev Spasavuri Egeret Sokum Serpo, Hai Rafael Andoniani, Hisha Havur Mezi Kalestian Arkai Tianko, Ararjani Bor Mutian Kavutian Yetogutian Megats, Tasavorial by the Raton Surpus Quachagom Yan Tasum, Zitu is there, Yevararich Amenetsum, Tadavor Gentan Yatsi Merelots, Yevkes Vile Park, Ishanutun Yebadiv, Ajem, Yev Nishjevavid Yanas, Havidenitz. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. As we approach the end of our ceremony, I want to make a few announcements. Uh, first of all, we have been joined uh, in the course of the morning by a number of other elected officials, and I want to be sure to recognize them so that you're aware of their support. Uh, we've been joined by uh, my good friend, uh, state representative and soon to be state senator, Jason Lewis from Winchester. We've been joined by Joe Teddy, who's the mayor of Worcester, and also by Leland Chung, a uh, city councillor in Cambridge. Uh, we've also been joined by Laura Everett, who's the executive director of the Mass Council of Churches, and I thank all of them for being here today. reception uh, immediately after we finish here downstairs in the Great Hall. You go down the stairs immediately outside the chamber here. Uh, and also remind you that the buses for St. James and St. Stephen's will be leaving promptly. Promptly. <laughs> Armenian time? I'm not sure. <laughs> promptly at 1 p.m. That's what they told me to say. From the Beacon Street side of the State House. Uh, I want to draw your attention in your program. There's an insert, and you'll see in there uh, listed the names of the many individuals and groups who have made this uh, event possible. And I ask you to take a look at that, and, and uh, please thank those people when you see them. Uh, I want to recognize the members of the organizing committee. Uh, these people have been uh, meeting regularly for uh, four or five months now to plan this event. Uh, they are Hagopagopian. Ruth Tomasian, Marcel Karian, Solin Sarian, Aline Gregorian, Martin Haratunian, Herman Perutian, Baidzin Kalajian, the Reverend Father Antonik Baljian, the Reverend Father Raphael Andonian, in blessed memory. Kaspar Tarosian, Girard Hafsepian, the Reverend Father Vaskin Kazuyan, Reverend Dr. Avitis Boinerian, Reverend Father Arakel Algerian, and Maral Derterosian. Thank them all very much for all of their hard work. <laughs> I want 
to particularly signal out, single out uh, four individuals who uh, really made extraordinary efforts on behalf of uh, our commemoration. Uh, Megan Wood from my office, uh, Ann Johnson Landry from Senator Brownsberger's office, Michael Allen from Representative Rogers, and the amazing, indomitable chair of our organizing committee, Lalig Musarian. They have given many, many hours. attending to the uh, countless number of details that are involved in carrying out this event. Uh, in addition, I want to acknowledge some of the organizations that have made special contributions to our ceremony today, including the Knights of Vartan, Ararat Lodge One for providing the buses, as they always do, uh, Ani Catering for providing and serving the refreshments at the reception, and Cast the Florist in Watertown and Paradise Flowers in Belmont for providing the beautiful flowers we have here. I thank again all of the participants and speakers. I particularly want to thank the survivors for being with us here today. Uh, and and I thank the veterans here from the AMVETS Post 41. And we've also been joined by Reverend clergy from churches all around the state. And we thank them very much for being here. A final thought, if I could. Last year at this time, uh, the city of Boston and later Cambridge and Watertown were the subject of an attack. An attack that was intended not only to sow terror, but also to sow distrust and even hatred between people of different nationalities, ethnicities, and faiths. Yesterday morning, I attended a ceremony at Watertown High School, at which a flag, a Watertown strong flag, was raised in front of the school to thank our first responders for their bravery, for their professionalism in responding to that attack. And the students who conceived and organized that ceremony, they truly reflected the diversity of our community. Their surnames are Bedrosian, Chase, Farhani, Figueroa, Hughes, Lee, and Shah. That says to me that the bombers failed. Our unity, our tolerance, our understanding were not weakened. They were strengthened. Next year will be the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. For Armenians, there will be poignancy and no doubt a great deal of pain as that milestone approaches. For even after a hundred years, there are truths that remain unrecognized, <coughs> wounds that remain unhealed, and there are losses that can never be made whole. It's my hope that the unity that was demonstrated in Boston and in Watertown last year, and again in Watertown yesterday, will help to bear you up. We who represent the people of Massachusetts, Armenians and non-Armenians, will stand by you. We will not let deniers delude or divide us. We will not let time dull our sensitivity to the enormous crime perpetrated in Ottoman Turkey a century ago. Genocide is a crime against all humanity. That's what the word means. And of course, that word was coined specifically in the wake of the Armenian Genocide. It is a crime against all humanity. And it's truly the cause of all humanity to ensure that no genocide is ever denied or ever forgotten. To close our ceremony, I now ask you to please stand as the Reverend Clergy lead us in the higher mayor, the Lord's Prayer in our meeting.
That concludes our ceremony. Thank you all very much for being with us here today. And please join us downstairs at the reception. Thank you.